the third speaker, right? Is Ronnie Adikarya. He is an international uh, uh, development uh, worker in communication, 40 years. Uh, uh, going around the world, he has traveled to 89 countries. And uh, working with the World Bank, the United Nations, and other international organizations, at Stanford University, at the East West Center, he has been a trainer in many of these institutions. Uh, originally from Indonesia, he now, I think, uh, does not have a country. He lives everywhere, everywhere he goes. No? So I'm not sure what is his nationality now. <laughs> It's the nomad, yes, the nomad. He has written eight books on communication and extension and education. And uh, published in Germany, Italy, England, USA, Singapore, and Malaysia. Good morning. Uh, I would like to share a... Uh, Local wisdom. Normally, before I speak to the large audiences, uh, I share this local wisdom because I came from, I was born in Bogor, Indonesia, West Java. So I normally say, Sampurasun. Okay. Sampurasun means I'm asking for permission to speak. And please forgive me. If I said something wrong or something that you do not like and therefore you need to reply by saying Rampes and we do it Sampurasun Thank you very much Thank you for inviting me to this uh, important meeting, this forum uh, When I was invited uh, on approach, they told me that you need to come. I said, I had already an engagement me 18 months ago that started yesterday. But Con and Chris said, wow, no, you need to come. And what they give me as a carrot is that you're going to see your old friends again or old time friends again. I said, who are they? Shelton Bunaratni, my God, Shelton and I were in USM in 1974. That was almost 43 years ago. Flora Rosario, we were together in 1972, 45 years ago. Now you might think, oh my God, why you all those with the seniors? <laughs> Well, I was always the youngest at the time, in the 70s and the 80s. I was still the youngest. And I'm glad again today, I'm sitting in this distinguished panel, and I'm still the <laughs> Thank you, sir. Okay, uh, let me give you a, a context. I'm not going to be talking about heavy stuff. I'm a storyteller. I tell what's going on, especially today in the changing world. And I am going to be giving you a context first. I'm not going to talk straight to communication. I know within the time allotted to me 15 minutes, it is difficult to accomplish this. It's impossible to accomplish this. But in my PowerPoint presentation, which I will put it in dropbox.com. The address will be at the end of this PowerPoint. And also, Ahmed is going to put it in their website, so it's available. This is all public domain. And what I said is always, you can fact check it. It's all available, okay? So what we do is, I'm going to talk from the back to the front. Because 15 minutes, I'm going to start with my conclusions. In the first part, there will be the conclusion, what I thought of communication today. The second part, 
which I will try to only go through it to tell, to show you what we have, is basically what has been going on the last 40 years. Who has done what, with what communication, with what results. With photographs, thank you very much, Dr. Floor, for already mentioning the who and who. But I have also photographed evidence, evidence that we were there. And you can see how handsome and how pretty we were 40, 30 years ago. If there's no photograph, it doesn't, it may not happen. And the last part is the lessons learned, the best practices and poor practices. Evidence to show how well the Western concept, quote unquote, are being applied in Asia. What have we contributed to the body of knowledge in the field of communication globally? You see, there are plenty, but plenty in different times. We live in different times now, and therefore we need to be thinking also differently than 40 years ago. Uh, basically, that's what I'm going to do. Okay? Are you with me? Yes. Yes? yes. Are you ready? Yes. Good. How am I doing the time? Global transformation due to what? My friend Thomas Friedman, many have read Thomas Friedman book already almost 10 years ago. The world is flat, no more round. Why? CSM. You all know what CSM is, right? C is S M Mobile Technology. The Internet of Things are equalizers and the level, the leveling the playing field. You see that? I'm talking about democratization of information. Everybody can become a press. And we're talking about the free press. Everybody now can become a journalist. The concept has changed. Sorry. Oops. Singapore under threat. I'm praying may not like this to see this. Have you seen this? I'm like, what? This chart of Terence Lee. Look at this. Look at this. 47% of the GDP of Singapore industry are being threatened by the likes of Alibaba. Lazada, Grab, Netflix, WhatsApp, WeChat, etc. Tesla. Singapore. So, no longer the capital land. Singtel. Those are sunset industries. The day Amazon created tsunami, when they announced they're going to buy Whole Food, the market capitalization of supermarkets around the world, including the German ones, there are 20, 30 billion gone in 40 minutes. 30 billion gone in 40 minutes. At Wall Street. These are all very related to what we are concerned with. You may not like it, you may not realize it, but it is because of communication. The core issue is all communication. But, do we realize it? Are we teaching our students about that? Airbnb, a new company, only four years, they beat the hell of Marriott worldwide. Look at the figures. It took 88 years to build Marriott worldwide. And now, Airbnb has almost the same number of rooms. And they operate in more countries 
der Menge. This we live in a world of sharing economy. We share. It's basically the concept of economy that is increasing the efficiency of underutilized assets. This is especially great for Asian countries because they are always looking at efficiency, increasing efficiency. The Uber, the Coursera, you know how many students enrolled in Coursera, how many millions now? For free? <laughs> and how many are in the consortium? And there are world-class universities. Free education through Coursera. Who are those people who subscribe to the sharing economy? Look at the percentage, not people like us. Oh, no, sorry, sorry, sorry. People like me. People in this, on this stage. The general X and millennium. 55%. The next biggest disruptor is coming. Artificial intelligence. That's why I like the CEO of uh, what company? Who talked about algorithm of things. Those are the terminology of today. Anything we do has to do with algorithms. That's the key word. That's the key to communication these days. Have you seen Sophia? Have you met Sophia? You have met Siri? You have met Alexa? These are communication. We are communicating with them in the future. Oops, sorry. Oops, there is something that is missing. I have one or two slides that's missing here. What happened? Oh, of course. The good thing in Dropbox is that I can add slides and you can still see it. I have a slide about unemployment created by all this. So, in the, so this is part of my conclusion. Asia has produced a significant ingredient for the last five, four or five decades to local wisdom adaptation. Yes, we may not create new theories, but we adapt it. Adapt it for our need. And that is what we call globalization, not globalization. Global vision, global concept, adapt it to local context, local action. To global global application of communication models, principles, and approaches. But the nature and purpose of communication in the last decade, as I mentioned, has drastically changed. The CMS model has provided different changing contexts for communication practice. This is more important in Asia. And among the fun generation. Do you know what fun generation is? The F Facebook. What's the A? Amazon. And the M? Netflix. And the G? Google. They, by the way, in two years, replaced TGIF. What are TGIF? In two years. What is TGIF? Twitter? Because Twitter is order down from the Tuesday, it's going downhill. Market life. G? Google, still there. I? Instagram. Boom. And F is Facebook still. Because the same generation, the millennial, are basically different, different culture, communication culture, habits and styles. Different mindsets. Different way of communicating. Different way of looking at the world. And yet, they are our concern. For educators, you don't need not to think about what happening in today's job market, but seven years from now, because when you have students entering your school year, they will go into the job market only seven years from now. So you need to be able to, to anticipate what kind of world, what kind of life, what kind of economy will happen seven years from now, not this year. We will never be ahead of the curve if that is the case. Today, communication is no longer communication. Communication is a management tool. 
for knowledge broken. Knowledge management has pirated, has taken over communication as a discipline in many universities. This is a threat. And they are not only talking about multidisciplinary, they are talking about transdisciplinary. They move two steps ahead. Look at the discipline, disciplinary, multidisciplinary, interdisciplinary, and transdisciplinary. We need to be looking at this. Because why? Because if you look at Uber or Airbnb, is it a taxi company? Is it a hotel company? No. It is a communication company. Because their asset, the most valuable asset is what? Is their communication management system. That is the key to communication now, especially in five, seven years. But most disruptive technology, we talk about disruption, business model has changed from creative economy to shared economy. You see the like YouTube, Amazon, eBay, Airbnb, Uber, etc. Next. However, those disruptors are communication based. But such communication, tacit knowledge, I make distinction, tacit knowledge and explicit knowledge. I don't have time to discuss it, but just go fact check it. Two minutes to go, please. Yeah. <laughs> Not in the curriculum of communication schools. There is a democratization of information and education, mainly to do crowdsourcing. Right? Knowledge brokering surface. And therefore, passive knowledge is the only one that is monetizable, the rest are not. In seven years, learning or section will become dinosaur if you do not provide extra passive knowledge. So, communication competence, what is it? You cannot keep up, you cannot keep up with the changes in technology. So the best strategy, especially for education, is communicating on the process of how to learn Unlearn and relearn like tough. Tough. Managing broccoli and connecting the dots, as Steve Jobs like to say, of passive knowledge, making sense of the explosion of knowledge that you can get for free. And most communication, all schools is this: they, if you graduate and get a job, you're a failure. My alma mater, Stanford, has that principle be creating job and therefore in our field we need to have communitypreneurs because everything else is communication. Now my big worry is that there is inflation of communication students and communication universities especially in Asia. Inflation, there are too many. Every university has communication school and yet they are offering more of the same. Advertising, public relations, broadcasting, more of the same. Look at the curriculum, do an analysis, 10%, 90% uh, of them are still like that. Although, Two they, know, <laughs> Two they know that those kind of classification will be obsolete, irrelevant, five, seven years from now. You're doing a disservice, it's unconscionable. For communication, people say, please come, pay my tuition, and we teach you about advertising that will no longer be available. Read the book of my friend, Emmanuel Ross Rosen, called Absolute Value. Better X. Yeah, X. First acknowledge program to community and practice and community communities. Let me see what else. Okay, because time is finished, I want to talk also about pentahelix model. We move from quadruple helix model into pentahelix because, because of this advancement in communication, the crowdsourcing, crowdfunding, etc. Okay, empowering society, facilitating synergy collaboration through crowdsourcing, etc. These are the new words that we need to master. Quick, I'm not going to go through. I just want to show you what we have, okay? This is what we need to do in uh, cybercrime and post-truth. 
public education about the credit of terms, astuteness, etc., medical, uh, cyber law, digital communication, ethics, cyber security, etc. Somebody mentioned already, uh, support legislation. Quick, not yet. Okay, now. Double X. Uber. <laughs> My prompter is at the back. Yeah. Putting out no two, two Facebook doesn't have content, Alibaba doesn't have inventory, Arbet, but yet their communication is a discommunication for it. Now the rest, you can see for yourself, they are nice photographs. These are the section about pioneers, the names, and what they have done. What is important? The name and their notable accomplishments, okay? And then also here are the photograph when we were 43 years ago. You see that Florasario, Rivers, Dan Lerner, myself, uh, there are many people, somebody mentioned it, there's Dube, yeah, there is uh Gotten Chu, Steve Taffy, etc. Those were 40 years ago, and then there are photographs. This is the new one. Me and my many deals of communication only. Two years ago, they are still there. This is how they look now, 40 years after. So take a look at the photograph. This is of Hester Value. They told me you need to talk here as a witness of history. I am giving the history in this presentation. Yeah. Thank you very thank much. You. <laughs> Rory, thank you very okay, much. Okay, all that, please. You know, you're there. Okay, all that. I cannot pull him down, he's bigger than I am. <laughs> so I just have to rely on my persuasive powers. Thank you very much.